Good afternoon, everyone. I'm Kevin Glatz, and I'm a program facilitator working with Regina District Industry Education Council and Sunwest School Division. Today, it's my pleasure to introduce Brittany Gilchrist, who is a librarian archivist at Rosetown Central Library. The library is part of the Wheatland Regional Library System that serves communities across West Central Saskatchewan. Brittany is a graduate of Rosetown Central High School, and after attending the University at the U of S, she returned here to do, become our local librarian. Brittany will tell us about her job and highlight her educational journey that brought her to this point. I find it a little extra rewarding uh, to see Brittany take uh, the position here as I was Brittany's high school social studies and history teacher. So seeing her work in her, with our community archives makes me very proud. <laughs> Just a reminder, reminder before we begin, this session is being recorded and will appear on the RDIEC YouTube channel for you or others to view in the future. We'd also like to suggest that any students who watch this session go to our website at www.rdiec.ca and complete the student survey that can be found on the website page. Completion of the survey gets your name in a monthly draw for a $50 gift card. Again, the website is www.rdiec.ca. So once again, thanks Brittany for doing this and welcome and I'll turn it over to you. All right. So yes, I'm Brittany Gilchrist. I work as the community librarian and uh, head archivist at the Rosetown Centennial Library and Archives uh, here in Rosetown, Saskatchewan. So for a little bit of a general job description, um, as far as the librarian portion of my work goes, um, some of the things that I do on a very regular basis, um, I order a lot of materials for individual patrons as well as care homes. Um, for example, every month I order books and audiobooks for two separate care homes in our community. Um, and I order them 50 books or 50 items every month of whatever genres they request and prefer. Um, and then I have to keep track of how many books I get for them each week, uh, make sure they're all returned on time um, and coordinate the delivery of those books to the care homes. Um, something else I do is I assist, um, I design community-based programs. Um, I assist patrons with technical matters, um, like helping them set up an email or a library account. Um, in the past year with the pandemic, um, when, we were um, having to get key vaccine certificates and QR codes. We were um, a place in the community people could come and get help with that and setting that all up. Um, so we did a lot of that as librarians this year. Um, uh, we do, I do managerial duties and social media upkeep. So just the, the usual um, sort of expectations there, making sure we have stock of all of our cleaning materials and everything like that. Um, I also report to the library board uh, at regular meetings and I take minutes of each meeting. So um, as head librarian, I am also the secretary for the Rosetown Library Board. Um, so that is my job. Um, and I also coordinate those meetings um, and organize them. And I uh, make sure that those minutes get to our central office after every meeting. Um, I also record the month end financials and statistics and complete year end reports for the library. Um, as far as archival stuff goes, a lot of what I do is I organize and I maintain collections and I get familiarized with the contents of the archive. Um, I've only been the lead archivist for not even a year yet. So I'm still kind of going through um, and learning what all we have uh, and where it is and get it, kind of getting it set up um, in a way that is easier for me. Um, I also examine and accession all the new donations we get in. I answer historical and genealogical questions with the proper historical research. Um, and I upload our collections to the online database Memory SASC, um, which is powered by the Saskatchewan Council for Archives and Archivists. Um, so what that is, is we go in, we can upload our information for either our physical collections, so that's our Hollinger boxes um, that are full with uh, physical documents, um, and I can also upload scans of our photograph collections, which is what I've been working on for the past year. I'm nearly finished uh, with one collection. Um, and uh, something else to note just with the database um, and working with SCAA, um, it's you have to be comfortable um, navigating a database, uploading to one, and you have to know the terminology, um, the description rules uh, as dictated by RAD or the rules for archival description. 
So for skills and traits, um, the ideal librarian and or archivist should be confident with their knowledge regarding technology. That's a huge part of the job. Um, and you should enjoy reading, obviously, that's a big help. Um, having a positive, friendly attitude is huge. Um, we really do deal with so many different people uh, every day. Um, and you never know where someone's at in their uh, journey. So it's good to be nice and kind and welcoming to them, especially in a library. It encourages them to come back. Um, you have to be familiar with doing historical and genealogical research, obviously, but especially in an archive setting, which is a little bit different from just doing your at home kind of freelance research, um, but I'll touch on that a little later on. Um, you also need to be curious and determined um, when you get those kind of hard to answer historical questions, you really have to keep searching and working hard to find those answers, um, because that's that's your goal is to uh, help whoever is coming to you for answers as best you can. Um, you also need to be attentive to the patron's needs. Um, so, you know, it's there's often a specific relationship between a librarian and a patron, um, especially if they're a regular patron. Um, they might have certain materials that they want to bring in um, that they only trust you uh, with handling. Um, and you also kind of need to um, guess what they would maybe want to try next, um, encourage them to branch out. Uh, you need to be open-minded and creative as well. For my facility, so like I said, I work at the Rosetown Centennial Library in Rosetown, Saskatchewan. Um, it's located in the middle of Lovett Park, which is really nice. There's lots of trees and a walkway, um, and we get a lot of families coming in uh, due to our location. Um, and the archives are located at the back of the library building. So some of the equipment that we use, um, a lot of our best resources these days are digital, uh, like Polaris Leap, which is the library software. So this is what we use to do check-ins, checkouts, renewals, orders, everyday basic library uh, work. Um, we also used Ancestry.ca a lot um, for uh, the archive stuff. And actually it's great because we can access Ancestry through the library website um, and we get free access to it. So that's really helpful. Um, and our patrons get it also if they come to do genealogical research at the library, they get free access to that website. Um, and another thing we use is the Wheatland Regional Library website itself. Um, so the Wheatland Regional Library and the LEAP are the two websites that we use every single day. Um, Wheatland has a staff login on their website so that we can go in to get access to forms and statistics and that sort of stuff. Um, but we can also look through the Wheatland Regional Library website to find out if we have a specific book here at our branch or not, um, because believe it or not, I don't know every single book that's on our shelves yet. Um, <laughs> not sure I ever will, but uh, that's a huge help. Um, another website that I use a lot as a librarian is called Fantastic Fiction. Um, so this allows me to search up an author and to see their entire works, their series separated um, and organized by year. Um, so when a patron says they want more books from a specific author, it's just as easy as searching them on this website and finding everything they've written. Um, and then uh, kind of questioning the patron of what they've read, what they haven't. Um, and it also has a really handy feature that it shows you similar authors to whoever you looked up. So if there's a patron that's kind of wanting to try something different or read someone different, um, I can really get a good uh, idea of what to recommend for them from that website. So some of the equipment used, um, there's still a lot to be said for the old reliable things like microfilm readers, books, and newspapers, because there's just some information that you cannot find without them. Um, and this is kind of what I alluded to when I said that archive-based research is a little bit different. Um, it is a lot more physical than digital oftentimes. Um, while there's a lot of stuff and there's more stuff every day that gets uploaded onto a database, for most older documents and even some photos, you will have to physically go to the archive to look at them. Um, and it involves using things like microfilm readers or looking through books and newspapers and that sort of stuff. Um, and so you really have to kind of teach yourself how to use those um, and get comfortable with them because with especially with microfilm readers, there's 
um, often a lot of newspaper and magazine editions that you really won't be able to find digitized online. So you have to search through everything um, to find the information you want and you still might come up empty, but a large part of the fun is just trying. So some of the rewards of the occupation uh, is just the huge swell of relief and excitement when you find the historical tidbit that you were looking for and suddenly all of your questions are answered and you can finally sleep at night. Um, and another thing is a patron's genuine happiness when you find them the book that they were looking for, um, especially if they didn't think you'd be able to find it. Um, and another thing is helping young children get excited about reading for the first time. Um, even just asking a child what their favorite books are can light up their faces and get them really excited. And it also encourages the parents in turn because they're reading these books to their kids and to see them get excited about oh, uh, finding books at the library and picking up books is really reassuring to them. Um, Helping someone learn new things about their family's past is always really fun and interesting. Um, and in turn, you also learn new things yourself every single day. I learn new things all the time when I'm here. Um, helping someone answer a historical question, it's, it's an information sharing process. Um, and oftentimes they open up and they will tell you little factoids or things um, about an event or people that you didn't know of before. So it's just nice to take little mental notes of that and to broaden your own knowledge on the topic. And then of course there's challenges. There's always gotta be. Um, so one thing is being unable to help someone find what they're looking for. Sometimes, um, especially with really older volumes of books, um, we don't always have them uh, in the province. Um, I, I can try as a librarian to source them from outside of the province through uh, interlibrary loans, um, but it's not always guaranteed. And it kind of sucks when you can't get what someone wants, um, but that's just kind of how it works. Um, there's also large workloads at various times. So like year end, um, organizing and doing the board meetings, doing the minutes and everything afterward, um, attending re regional meetings. Um, that's a lot of work goes into those days of work, um, but it's worth it. Uh, it also requires a lot of flexibility because it involves working under a larger regional organization. So while yes, we are overseen by a community-based library board, that is overseen by Wheatland Regional Library, which is then overseen by Saskatchewan Libraries. Um, so you just kind of have to be a little bit flexible. There's um, uh, certain procedures and stuff like that that have to be followed uh, to accommodate those other organizations. And of course, you get the occasional rude or problematic patron and the flare-ups of negativity that can sometimes result. Unfortunately, no one is exempt from the occasional negative work experience. Uh, for salary and benefits, so it's pretty broad, um, but a library assistant can start around that 14 to $15 an hour mark um, and advance from there. Um, Archivist work, if you're in a city um, and working at like a provincial archives or something like that, um, or working for an organization as an archivist, contract archivist work can be around $30 an hour or more. Um, but it really varies by location and by position. Um, some places there's a cap on what you can make. Um, in smaller communities, um, you won't find yourself making uh, the same high salary as like a librarian or an, or an archivist in a city, um, but it's really just worth it to be in a small community because they need, they need that help a lot more. Um, and there's always room for advancement. Um, as far as benefits goes at the library board's request, um, benefits can be received uh, that are received by the town employees can also be extended to community librarians. And this might not always be the case for every community, but in my case, um, we our library is in a building that is owned by the town of Rosetown. So um, we are paid by them um, and everything else. So if we needed those benefits, they can put in a request and we can get the same benefits allotted to uh, official town employees. 
Um, work hours are often determined locally and by the library board. Um, it's typically more of a part-time employment schedule at the community level, uh, the smaller community level, um, but this may differ in larger cities um, in their libraries and archives where they're open later or longer or on weekends. Um, if you go through like on the Wheatland website and you go through the libraries in the province or in the region to see their hours, you'll see they're vastly different from every community. So it really is just determined by that community and by that library board. Uh, for educational requirements, you do need a grade 12 education, um, but there's lots of post-secondary options available for aspiring librarians and archivists. Basically a, a bachelor's degree in almost any fine arts field would be acceptable uh, with his, history and English being among the best options for that field. Um, but I would also recommend that going the extra step further and trying to obtain an honors degree in your chosen major is very beneficial and it's not nearly as daunting as it sounds. Um, it really does uh, kind of give you a, a foot up uh, on your resume when you have that honors attached to your degree. Um, training courses are often offered to librarians by the regional library that they work under, and they're very helpful in gaining more knowledge about the field of work, about the software you use, um, about the various procedures uh, and uh, agreements that are in place. Um, so it really just deepens your knowledge of your job, your position, um, and what you are expected to do. Um, and I would also recommend if you want to work in an archive, I would say really try to volunteer at a local museum or an archive because it gives you really valuable research experience. Um, I, when I was going to university every summer, I worked at my hometown's museum um, and it was incredibly beneficial for me um, personally. So kind of leading into the next slide, which is my journey. Um, so when I was in grade 12, uh, with the help of Mr. Galetz, I enrolled in the U of S, uh, not really knowing exactly what I wanted to get into, just kind of knowing what subjects I was interested in. Um, but I just signed up in the arts and science fields and I took a few general classes like English, psychology, geology, archeology, span sociology, and history. And I actually ended up falling in love with the university level history classes and the way that they challenged me and my knowledge. Um, they were just uh, the teachers, the professors, of course, also were a huge uh, influence on my decision to make that my major. I had some really great history professors that first year. Um, and then so I declared it my major after my first year and I enrolled in the honors program and I obtained my degree. So then in my last summer at the University of Saskatchewan, I was given a position in the History Collaboratorium. So this is a collaborative team-based work opportunity offered uh, exclusively at the University of Saskatchewan by Dr. Keith Carlson of the History Department. Um, and while I was there, I worked directly under Dr. Carlson doing historical and genealogical research involving the kidnapping and forced assimilation of Indigenous children in BC during the Fraser River Gold Rush. Um, and this job, as well as the work that I did in a museum um, as a tour guide, like I mentioned earlier, really gave me the tools that I needed to eventually become an archivist. Um, it showed me how to do that historical research using books and microfilm and archives and everything else. Um, it showed me how to make family trees and how to use Ancestry.com and everything else. Um, and it really got me comfortable with talking with people um, and learning from them as well as from my books and my uh, research. So then after university, I ended up working as the executive director at an interpretive center in Herschel, Saskatchewan. Um, in there, I specialized in presenting and promoting First Nations history. And that also really made me feel a lot more comfortable speaking to people. Um, and it really kind of helped ground me in um, this area of Saskatchewan, the history of this <clears throat> area and of the First Nations peoples who lived here long before settlers came. Um, that was huge as well. Um, and then the pandemic came along uh, and I had some really uh, unfortunate five months, um, but then the opportunity to add librarian to my resume came along and so I jumped at it. 
Um, but did I think I would end up working at a library when I was in university? No, but am I glad it happened? Yes, I am. So some of the opportunities available, um, there's not really a constant need for librarians or archivists, um, which means that you'll most likely need to inquire at various locations regarding their employment availability. Um, larger cities may have less of a demand, however, um, than more rural communities, um, because at the rural level, it's mostly volunteer work oftentimes, especially in the historic uh, sector. It's a lot of volunteer work. Um, so even if you just take a volunteer work as in that position, it's a great way to get your foot in the door for advancement. Um, but uh, these opportunities for advancement at the library uh, at a regional level crop up about every year or so, although it's usually more specialized positions like program manager or IT, that sort of stuff. Um, but you know, even just volunteering at a rural level could lead to a position in a city or provincial archives. Um, it can help you gain that experience that can lead to you obtaining an education degree. Um, as far as life and work balance goes, um, I'm home by five or six every night. So it allows me to contribute meaningfully to my community and still sp spend plenty of time with my uh, family. Um, but it's a really, really beneficial job, not only for that reason, um, but it's just good, a good way to immerse yourself in whatever community you are doing this work in. Um, and to, uh, you gain a lot of trust with people as you work in these positions, um, especially as an archivist. Um, you gain a lot of trust. People come in, they want you know, your help answering these questions that they have, whether it's about their family or a really niche hockey game or um, tiny minuscule little event that happened in the history of whatever town. Um, and you end up helping them to find that answer. Um, and they'll keep coming back to you with more questions as they continue to do their research. So it's really, really beneficial for both sides. Um, and also just going back to this slide for a second, I'll just mention that there are institutions in Canada that do offer explicit library science studies courses, uh, which you can get your diploma in. Um, in Saskatchewan, I believe Sask Polytechnic offers a two-year diploma program for library technologists and library science. Um, and there's a few bursaries offered in Saskatchewan through Saskatchewan libraries for students who are pursuing a library degree to help them with tuition costs. And now I'm on to questions and answers. So that's all I have. <laughs> that's excellent, Brittany. Um, I just, a question, uh, of course, with my history background, I'm, I'm quite interested in the archives. Is there a, I mean, this is maybe just more of a storytelling thing. Is there more of a unique or interesting or archival find that you've had in your experience so far? Like just something like, wow, what, like, this, is, this is incredible. Um, I have, I, for as far as like research stuff goes, it's been pretty basic family stuff. Um, but uh, just looking through the archives in the back, I've stumbled across a Bible that's over 100 years old, which is extremely cool to look at. Um, and I found a whole bunch of photos that this guy named Linus Kunkel took in like the early 1910s, 1920s. And it's, um, there's just a pile of them that we have to go through in accession and uh, work on flattening them as well because they're all dried and curled up. <laughs> um, but they're really, really cool, just like candid photos of them like driving old cars out, on, out in a field and playing with puppies and being at a lake and, you know, in costume, make, doing a performance. And it's just like, I could spend hours just looking through these photos because they're so fascinating. <laughs> Was he local? I take yes, it. yeah, he, um, they came from Ontario and they were here for quite a while before they moved to BC. I believe he worked for CE Conlon, um, who had, I think it was like a hardware or something store yeah, downtown. Yeah. Yeah, and then uh, he was a farmer and then, yeah, they moved to BC, but they were here for a long time. Yeah, cool. Yeah, it's just, it's just, you kind of think of all the communities that exist in, well, in anywhere and, and you think of all the, you know, the, those photographs and documents and old books that uh, people have and 
just to, to sort through that stuff and find stuff in it. It's like a needle in a haystack, I'm sure, but it's probably, probably worth it. It is, yeah, yeah. I mean, we have shelves and shelves of books of all of those little uh, community history books that everyone made in like the 1980s. And just like looking through them and looking at the history of these communities that I've never been to, but like seeing kind of similarities and differences and how they started up. And it's just like so fascinating. <laughs> I'll into it. Um, so like for training, like you did the university route, um, is there, a, you know, would you recommend that route? Is that, does that give you a broader, broader education or, you know, like that library technology course, uh, you know, at SAS Polytech, probably a little more specific for, for library, but would, yeah. would you, would you, are you glad you took the university route? I'm very glad I took the university route. Yeah, it, um, it really gave me a base for improvement in terms of the research and everything else. Um, and in going to university, it really helped me find a passion for history. Um, I mean, I was always fascinated by history for as long as I can remember, but getting to go into those classes where it's more of a challenge and it's, um, you know, you go into these three hour seminars where you're doing readings and discussing them. And it's just, it really opens your mind to different points of view um, and just, everything that really you don't you don't notice it in the moment really always when you're learning new things and you know even just like learning how to properly write an essay and stuff like that yeah. and it sticks with you after you graduate and it can really benefit you um like i still do i still end up having to write reports and stuff like that and i find myself knowing or feeling a lot more comfortable doing that after having spent years at university doing it all the time um, so it really um, kind of just helped solidify for me that yes, this is what I want to do. Um, Nick, Nick, that's good to hear because I think sometimes there's sometimes some parents and some students are a little reluctant to go into a, like a general arts program, uh, you know, from school because like what you know what am I going to do? And, and there is an unknown when you when you leave high school with that. I get that. And you, like yourself, you said you weren't sure either. But sometimes that's where you discover, like you said, you discover a passion and you discover a, a subject area that you know becomes the you know or it guides you to your future kind of thing. Exactly, and uh, a lot of my colleagues in the that were also studying history at the U of S, that was their case too. They didn't know when they went to university that they wanted their degree in history, but they just took a few classes and ended up there. Um, so it really just kind of shows you, it kind of guides you, I feel like, um, in terms of, you know, you get to experience all these different courses and all these different classes and then kind of go from there and make your own decision about, well, what sparked my interest the most? What made me feel happiest or most excited? Um, and then just follow that passion. Yeah, go with it, yeah. Good. Brunette, do you have any points or questions? Or? Yeah, I, I do have a, actually a question for Brittany. So where do you, I mean, the passion obviously comes through in your presentation and we thank you for doing that. Uh, but I'd like to know, where do you see yourself, say five, 10, 15 years down the road? Um, are, do you see yourself staying in Rosetown? And which is cool because we need young people to stay in our small towns too, but where do you aspire to be, you know, say years from now? Um, whether or not I'm in Rosetown, I don't know, but I know that down in the road, I do still want to be, I mean, I'm not a city person, so I will never live in a city if I can help it, but I, down the road, I just, I still want to be in a community where I can um, help, where I can, um, whether it's through historical work or not, um, even if I can just volunteer at certain places, just to be um, there to help kind of uh, push the community forward in the right direction in terms of, um, you know, having that, you uh, young younger generation kind of stepping up um to either whether it's to help preserve their history or work in their small libraries or anything like that um, i think it's just important to have younger people who are excited about doing that um, who want to do that um, even if it's for low pay you know it's just it's what that is kind of irrelevant to me um, so i think in the future, I still want to be doing this kind of thing where, um, you know, I'm benefiting from what I'm doing, but so is the community that I work in. Thank you. 
Thank you. Yeah, awesome. Thank you. That was a that was a great answer. Um, <laughs> A lot of our communities aren't getting younger, so we need that youth. <laughs> uh, that's, that's awesome. Yeah, thank you. Uh, I don't have any more questions, Renette. You're good? No, I think I'm good. Yeah, awesome presentation, Brittany. Thank uh, you so thank much. You. Thank you so much. Uh, we'll, just, we'll stop the recording.